HealthWish is a series of conversations about the state of healthcare in New York City's fabulous fifth borough, Staten Island. Our goal is to raise issues, raise awareness, and raise health, because when we raise health, we raise everyone. This is nothing to hiss about. The Staten Island Zoo has one of the largest reptile collections in the Northeast. And for years, the zoo has partnered with Staten Island University Hospital to train emergency medicine residents in a unique snake bite protocol program. This is advantageous to the community because it prepares the emergency department for even the rarest emergency. Let's see this amazing exhibit and hear from Dr. Nima Maglesi, one of the region's top toxicologists, about why this program is so unique. Give it a listen. Good morning. I am Dr. Nima Majlesi. I'm one of the medical toxicologists from Staten Island University Hospital. We're here this morning at the Staten Island Zoo. Welcome. I'm here with Matt Lanier, aka Reptile Matt. <laughs> Great to see you. Tell us a little bit of how you got that name, Matt. <laughs> well, uh, when I started at the zoo a little over 20 years ago, one of the first people I met here when I walked through the doors was Alex Carr, who you know very well. And uh, he had quite a few friends named Matt. And being a reptile keeper, he basically gave me that name from day one. And he just said, you know, you're Reptile Matt from now on. And that name has stuck ever since. And even here, uh, we have another Matt that works on the maintenance crew. So anytime I get called on the radio, it's always Reptile Matt come in. It's so That's it's, awesome. It is. That's great. Kind of a great little nickname to have. <laughs> so I've always been fascinated about the Staten Island Zoo, the history of it, the diverse venomous snake collection that you guys had. Can you tell me a little bit about how Staten Island got such a snake collection here? Sure, so that all started with a, uh, a gentleman named Carl Caulfield, who was the first director of the zoo. He originally worked for the Museum of Natural History in Manhattan. Him and a couple of his friends were really big into reptiles. They had a snake collection at each one of their houses and friends kept asking them, hey, you know, you, you got a bunch of snakes. Can I come see them? Can I come see them? And so they kind of got together and was like, you know, we should put all of our collection in one spot and kind of open it up to the public and, and uh, let them come see it. So we where we are now is actually a New York City park, just like Central Park. It's actually called Barrett Park. So this was, land was donated from a family and they said, you know, hey, we will donate the land as long as it is always kept a natural park, you know, and you can build. This was the first building built in 1936. It started with just this one building. Um, there were three, three different wings, a mammal wing, a bird wing, and a reptile wing. It's just grown ever since. And it was a super big hit and uh, people just love it. And we do, we have actually one of the most diverse and one of the largest venomous collections in the Northeast. I, I'm, you know, it's not, I wouldn't necessarily say it's the largest and it's not like we're really in competition with other zoos, but due to him, he was actually, Carl Caulfield was kind of like the crocodile hunter of the 40s and the 50s and the 60s. What he did, he wrote three books and he wrote them for the layperson, for the general just kid, uh, you know, in elementary school, middle school, high school, the adult that just wanted to learn more about snakes. So he, he was kind of the first guy to write on that level, not for doctors and journals like the Journal of Herpetology, where it was, you know, a lot of technical type terms. He wrote for the layperson. For example, Keepers and the Kept, that's one of his books. And it really talked about, you know, how to keep a snake and, and where, you know, you could find them. And so he was really instrumental back in the day, like I said, before there was the croc hunter. He was the croc hunter of the 50s and the 60s. And we literally, to this day, I have people coming from all over the world. Um, a friend of mine, Andrew now, uh, I say friend of mine because he's come here two or three times from Australia. He's a keeper, a reptile keeper in Australia. And anytime he comes to the States, he comes by to say hi because this zoo is literally known in the herpetological world uh, for, you know, for what our collection and because of Carl Caulfield. So that's how the Staten Island Zoo, you know, came to be. So fascinating to it me. Really I is. mean, um, so much safer than keeping them in your own home, right? Absolutely. Being able to come here and see these really <laughs> exactly. cool, fascinating creatures. Right, which is all, always the way you should do it. You, you know, you want to come and, you know, come, come here and see them. Don't get one and uh, have one in your home, please. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I always love talking about how many years we've been, we've known each other a long time yes. and, and how our collaboration started at Staten Island University Hospital. Before we met, 
Tell me, so, so one of the dangers of obviously doing this kind of work is always the potential for getting exposed to a venomous snake. Sure. Getting envenomated. So tell me what it was like before you, you guys met us, what the protocols were and what you guys used to do and, and kind of ha how it used to run. Before you guys came, it was a little, it was very cumbersome and a bit antiquated. What, we always have a protocol and every AZA accredited zoo goes through drills. And our drill at the time was we had our own zoo vehicle on grounds. And in the event of a snake bite, we would actually jump in the car. We would grab the antivenine from the refrigerator. We had to make sure we had the right antivenine. All of our snakes have numbers with the correct antivenine number. We would hop in the car and drive to a different hospital. This was before there were toxicologists like you on Staten Island. Since you guys have come, we have streamlined that protocol and now instead of it taking probably 10 to 15 minutes to get someone from here to the emergency room we've cut that down to probably like two to three minutes um, you guys um, email us every month we get a calendar of who's on duty for what day i have it right on the refrigerator the antivenine refrigerator so anybody that comes in and then we have to go through this step protocol. They can look right on there. We give you guys a call. Hey, we're coming. The ambulance comes here now. We're not getting in our own car and tearing through the streets of Staten Island. We, you know, that's all left up to the professionals now. So it's a much, much better relationship, I think, um, for us especially. We've taken a lot of the burden off of us and put it in the professionals, you know, like the ambulance drivers and things like that. Because you, uh, you're going to be in a heightened state of, you, you know, you're going to be freaking out. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, just, that's just the way it is you know and so it really makes me personally feel a lot more secure and a lot safer be sure to tune in next time for more stories from the emergency department healthwish wishes to thank our host dr nima maglesi and our special guest matt lanier we're very interested in your health wish contact us at healthwish at northwell.edu thanks for joining us we hope to see you again soon